the average investor loses to the S&P 500. That much is clear. But who is the average investor? Because I think the answer might surprise you. Welcome back everyone, my name's Paul. I'm new to investing and I'm doing my best to learn as much as I can. One thing that helps me to learn is as I discover something or figure something out, I relay it to camera and I just put it on YouTube. It's more just to help me learn than anything else. Usually I make a lot of mistakes and these videos are partly designed to help people not make the same ones. Most of all, these videos are designed to break down the barrier to investing that I felt pretty much my entire life. Investing just was not an option to me. I didn't understand it and it felt like it was a world that I wasn't allowed into. But when you actually look at it and you get through all the jargon and all the crap, it's not actually that hard to start. And in truth, you could actually start making money straight away very easily. You can do this by buying an index fund and investing consistently. Usually you're going to make great returns. There is a bit more to that though, which I wanted to discuss today. By the way, if you do like these videos or find them helpful, a lot of work goes into them. I do a lot of research. So if you could please just give it a quick like and subscribe. We're on 9,100-ish subscribers at the moment, which is fucking awesome. The road to 10,000 is on. But yes, if you feel like giving this video a like, I'm eternally grateful. Thank you so much for helping out. If you're watching this video, I'm assuming that you're an average investor. I highly doubt that Warren Buffett wakes up in the morning and loads up his Briscoe YouTube playlist. Hey Charlie, come check out the shit Briscoe spouted today. But if you are watching this video, you're probably an average investor. And according to the stats, you suck. One big problem that I've had since I started was that the average investor fails to beat the market. This is a graph by JP Morgan that releases all the returns by asset class between the years of 1999 and 2018. Right here we have the benchmark of the S&P 500, which is 5.6%. Not the guaranteed 8% that everyone keeps fucking talking about. But it is the benchmark. When people talk about beating the market, they talk about beating the S&P 500. They're looking at getting over 5.6% every year. REITs vastly outperform this at 9.9%. And in previous years, it's actually been much higher than that. It's been like 11, 12%. And then you've got oil and gold sitting at 7%, which isn't the norm. If you took a look at previous graphs like this in 2015, 2016, 2017, you'd see that they'd be quite different. Um, oil and gold are much lower down on the list. This could be good evidence for getting into gold at the moment. Probably not for oil though. However, what's most important to this graph for you and I is that the S&P 500 is actually quite a high index. And then the 6040 and the 4060 portfolios are generally considered to be managed funds. As in, these are the types of returns that you might start to feel if you let a manager take over your portfolio. And then as the list goes on, you're looking at bonds and homes and it gives you inflation there. And right at the end is the average investor. The average investor is a complicated one and I've been trying to discover who the average investor is and why they're so bad. A lot of people argue that the average investor sucks because they pick stocks and don't just invest in an index fund. I thought that too and the arguments are very compelling. I don't wanna turn this video into a stock picking versus index fund video because I don't think that's the answer. When we talk about stock picking versus index investing, index fund investors tend to use the same sorts of arguments. One argument against stock picking is that you're taking on an extra layer of risk. I'm not sure how big this extra layer of risk is uh, compared to systematic risk, which is the overall risk of the market. I don't know how much more risk you're actually taking by picking stocks. Um, I can't find a measurement for it. But essentially on top of the market risk, which is of the risk of the market going up and down, by stock picking in general, you're just opening yourself up to more risks like uh, a CEO being a right knobhead. So that's one very good argument for index investing over stock picking. And the other big argument for index investing over stock picking is the article which is called Do Stocks Outperform Treasury Bills? It's quite a famous argument that basically says that over 50% of all stocks ever uh, have failed. That's basically it. And on the other hand, only 4% of the 29,000 stocks that you could have possibly picked between now and 1929, only 4% of those stocks will have outperformed the market. 
It's an extremely comprehensive study that shows that most stocks will underperform or even fail. However, a lot of the detail is lost, like this table that's in the same study that shows the top 30 are all dividend stocks and FANG. So yes, stock picking as a whole is pretty bad if you pick the wrong 29,000 stocks. But we do actually have quite a lot of information that focuses on the top 30 stocks that outperform the market. The majority of them are dividend investing stocks, uh, with obviously the FANG stocks in there as well. I think this conversation is for a different time, but I do just want to get over the point that it might not be about stock picking that makes you a crap investor. The final piece of evidence that the index fund investors use as an example of why stock picking sucks is this JP Morgan graph. And I want to be clear again, just in case, that I am not against index investing. I still think it's the easiest and best way to make returns on your money. It just is. But I want to talk about the evidence of why the average investor, which includes the index investor, loses money. You see this green S&P 500 bar doesn't actually include index investors. It's just the benchmark of the index. It's just how much the index returns. As an index investor, simply investing into an S&P 500 ETF with taxes and fees included, you're not going to make this return, which means that this average investor bar includes all index investors as well. And by this logic, it actually shows that index fund investing isn't actually less risky than stock picking because the problem is most likely inherent within our behavior. Now, the data from this graph is actually very good. It's from a very large pool of information and it's all brought together by a company called Dalbar. And Dalbar actually offer a lot of information as to why they think this occurs. Dalbar focuses on the irrational behavior of buying high and selling low during a crash. The evidence shows that whether an average investor is in an index fund or it's stock picking, they're still going to be open to the same short term news scare cycle that we see all the time. If we take a look at the crash in 2008, this green line shows the drop in the S&P 500. So in October 2007, people started selling and by March 2009, it was at the bottom. It went all the way through October 09, October 10, October 11, and the market didn't fully recover until 2012. That's four and a half years that Joe Bloggs, who invested at the peak of the S&P 500 in 2007, that's how long he had to wait for his money to recover. That's a lot of time. So let's take a look at Joe. So Joe started to invest in October 2007. He lost a ridiculous amount of money by 2009. So during that first initial crash, Joe needed to have the balls to stay in. I don't know what to say. That's got to be a ridiculously hard thing to stomach. Just seeing your entire life savings getting wiped out in a year like that. So first, Joe would have had to have not sold at any point during that first crash. What's worse is he then has to wait four and a half years to make that money back. At what point during these four and a half years does Joe still not need that money? That's a long time for the average investor to think to themselves, oh, Stock market's not doing very well. Maybe I should just take it all out and put it into real estate. Or maybe I should start going stock picking. Or maybe I should just put it into another high yield investment fund. Better still, why don't I just sell out and then rebuy back in and I start back at zero? There's so many possibilities during those four and a half years that the average investor is likely to just sell out and cut their losses. And that's why this JP Morgan graph that's backed up by the Dalbar analysis, that's why it shows that index fund investors are no better than stock pickers. We're all open to the same emotion that means we could lose money. And it's possible that we're back up to the top of October 2007 right now. And the question is, are you an average investor? Study after study shows that when the market goes up, people start buying in. And then when the market goes down, people start selling off. It's the same as when your stock goes down and kind of stays down for a long time, you sell out and try and find a better way to do it. There are lots of stories where that does work out, but the majority of the time, it's just better to stay in. Unfortunately, as humans, our reaction to good and bad news is to overreact. That's why we have these massive crashes. It's impossible to time when these market crashes will happen. So your best bet is to just stay invested, whether it's in an index fund or your stock picks and invest consistently. Mutual funds, hedge funds, and even investing fund providers, they all use this same evidence to prove their strategy. But it looks like the truth is humans are just fucking idiots. And the thing that's most likely to cause you to lose money is you. So if you're asking your mates if you should hold money and wait for another crash, 
You're an average investor. If you think that that new SPAC stock looks like a quick buck, you're an average investor. If you're worried that a company missed its quarterly earnings, you're an average investor. Oh, but the market might trade sideways for 10 years. Average investor. Warren Buffett is old. Average investor. Is Tesla gonna hit $81? Average investor. Is Tesla gonna hit $23,000? Average investor. No, easy jet. Average investor. I'm selling that company because they cut their dividend. That's an average, average investor. The truth is, if you're invested in single stocks, you should be picking stocks that you completely understand and that you can stay with for a long time. In the same way, if you're invested in index funds, you should just put it in and forget about it. The reason why people lose money is because when those stocks and when those index funds go down, they sell out. Moving your money around all the time statistically doesn't work. It could have worked really well during this crash. It could have worked really well a couple of years ago. But in general, over the long term, your money is like soap. The more you handle it, the more of it you lose. Oh dear. You better bend over and pick that up. Mutual or managed funds are proof of this, with very few exceptions. They move their money around all the time with all those charts and graphs and all that knowledge. They still can't beat the market. And it turns out that they fail as well because they're open to the same behavioral problems that we are. No one can seem to get past this when they keep moving their money around. The ultimate thing to remember, whether you're index fund investing, whether you're growth investing, or whether you're dividend investing, is to simply invest consistently for the long term. And quick change of clothes. Very sorry guys for cutting that video short, but this week there's been a lot of trading 212 news out and I thought I needed to cover it. First things first, you might have noticed that Trading212 released a notification about the ADRs in the ISAs, which is something I covered a couple of weeks ago. So that's been totally confirmed now, and a lot of ADRs from Chinese stocks are going to be forced sold if they're held in an ISA. This does include NEO, which is probably going to be the biggest one, but there's 90 other different companies in there, so just be aware of that. I'm not sure what date that happens. Someone has said September the 1st, so you might have till September the 1st to choose whether you want to sell out. I don't know what the repercussions of this are going to be for Trading212. That's something that I guess they're just going to have to sort out. Second of all, Trading212 have decided they're going to change the way they're going to do the stock split. It's now different to the way I described it in the previous video where I covered it. They released quite a complicated table, which I thought was kind of hard to understand. But the way I understand it is you take the amount of shares that you currently have, whether that's a fractional or any whole ones, and you multiply that number by five if it's Tesla and four if it's Apple, I think. You take that number and any whole numbers will be counted as shares and any fractional numbers will be sold back to you. I know this is pretty soon. I think it's today actually it happens. So I apologize if this information has come out a little bit late, but I just wanted to correct it. That's how I see it. Uh, I still don't know if it's gonna change and I still don't know if it's 100% accurate what I'm saying. So please go to the forum or Trading212 themselves if you need advice on this. What would have been nice would have been for Trading212 to release a notification on this. So everything's really official. But I think this might just happen in a couple of days. And I hope there's a lot of people out there that will understand what's happening. If you wanted to, you can find out more information on the Trading212 community. You can also go to our Discord where there's a lot of people in there that actually do know what they're talking about. Those guys might be able to help you as well. But really, you should only be taking advice on this from Trading212 themselves. Some great news, though, is that they've improved their Pies feature and their Auto Invest feature. You can now put existing stocks into Pies. That's exactly what I've been looking for, and it's a great step towards making this entire portfolio passive. You've also got the ability now to export your pie, as in you can show people what exactly you've got in and how much they're weighted. You can do this by a link in the more options section of your pie. There will be a link in the description below to my pie, so you can take a look if you want. If I'm honest, I'm really looking forward to the auto invest feature. So I want to get to know it really well and see if it's actually useful for me before I start banging on about it on YouTube. Thanks very much for watching, guys. Please remember that I am not a financial advisor. I'm just an idiot on the internet. I have no financial credentials and I know nothing about investing. Please do not consider this video as personal financial advice. The app I use to invest is called Trading212. If you wanted to get involved in investing, you can use the link in the description below to sign up. If you sign up and deposit like a quid or something, you get a free share and I think it's up to 100 pounds. 
I also get a free share out of it because it's like a invite a friend scheme kind of thing. Thank you very much for watching guys and thank you everyone for your support. If you found this video entertaining or interesting for whatever reason, please feel free to like, subscribe and invest. Ugh, 10,000, man. That's ridiculous. Go watch Ben Felix. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 10,000. 10,000 is a lot, isn't it? Um, I don't know why. And, and many of the commenters are... <laughs> hey, Charlie, check out the shit Briscoe start. <laughs> hey, Charlie, check out the shit... <laughs> <laughs> what the fuck? Hey Charlie! Hey Charlie, come check out the ship Briscoe spouted today. Hey Charlie, come check out the <laughs> average investor. Wanna go buy a McDonald's? No, not a burger. Buy the actual fucking stock. Buy the whole company if you can. We got enough money. Fuck it, go for it. Index funds are best for you, not for me, because I'm much smarter than you. Don't like gold, so I'll just do a little reach around. Get into gold that way. Jeffrey Epstein didn't kill himself. We're not giving away no dividends, we take the dividends.